Amen. All God's people said amen. Amen. Amen again. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Look around the room. Come on, look. Come on, come on, look around the room and see. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're blessed today because we made the wake-up list. I said, we're blessed today because we made the wake-up list. We are not dead sleeping in our graves. Amen. Listen, listen, I'm not your MC tonight, but uh, listen, as we attempt to progress in our district, I'm, I need you all to do me a favor so we can take this witness here, this picture, this, this awesome group of people. Listen, what I want you to do is, if you don't mind, take your phones out. Amen. If you don't already have them out. <laughs> Amen. And I want you to text about five or ten people and let them know that we are going to be live on Facebook Live. Amen. We want you to help those who are unable to be here, maybe because they are at work, maybe because they are, at, are sick, or they're in the hospital. We have to think outside the box and include others who are unable to be here. Amen? So, so please do me that favor right quick. Come on, do it right quick. Come on, come on, come on, do it right quick. Come on, come on, do it right quick. Come on. Do it right quick. Find about five or ten people in your, in your contacts. And this is what I want you to text them. This is, this is Oakland's Mount, Mount Zion's Facebook handle. It is Oakland M.T. Zion Baptist Church. Oakland M.T. Zion Baptist Church. How you know you're at the right one, you will see the church logo. That's how you know that you are at the right one, all right? Now, now don't watch Facebook and you sitting in here live. That's just, <laughs> you know what I mean. Don't do that. Amen. A amen. Let's not disrespect the young people like that, all right? S and then encourage them to like it as well and to share. And, of course, if your church has a Facebook page, share it to your church's Facebook page. We could easily have 500 people online watching with us. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, moderator Hogue. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Let's give God some praise tonight. He's worthy to be praised to, to bring us on this another year. This is the 139th annual session. This is our youth night. Amen. And certain we are excited, looking forward to a, a spirit-filled evening this evening. Yes, sir. Uh, our, our preachers here for the evening. Right. Reverend Pastor Dante Paul, is he here yet? Uh, Pastor Warren, is he? Yes. He's not here yet? Okay. I'm going to ask you to come to the pulpit if you're here. He's Pastor Warren, He's Pastor, huh? He's in, the He's in the office, okay. Pastor Paul is in the office also? Is he here, Pastor Paul? Okay. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Amen. And uh, certainly we are excited to have our, our youth choir and these children here tonight. And we're going to turn it over to... Uh, uh, for praise and worship service to kick us off. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're going to turn it over to them right now for our praise and worship.
It makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to be us through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Let me encourage you, it's going to be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. So get ready, get ready. for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Woo! Sing it with me. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. With your name on it. With your name on it. With your name on it, 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 with your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. With my name on it. With your 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 name on it. Put your name on it. Put your name on it. call on Oakley Mount Zion for a welcome and then the response will be given by the Little Zion Baptist Church member this time and then uh, after that we'll have another selection by the MVP. Good evening and welcome to the UDA Youth Program. We are so glad that you have chosen this place of worship to honor the Lord's name with us. We would like to warmly welcome everyone that is gathered here tonight. Each one of you is special to us and we want you to feel his love as we worship together.
Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Union District Youth, you receive this welcome in the same spirit it is given with love and honor. Thank you.
Union District, this is what we need to be looking into the future for. It's worth everything that we can can muster up. Uh, that's that's why that building is so important. And uh, they're worth it. They're worth it. Amen. All right. This time we're going to ask uh, Sister Harris, Michelle, if she'll come for the appointment of the officers at this time. Amen. Sister Michelle Harris, give her a hand as she comes. Sister Harris. Thank you. I didn't want to walk across the, the middle at 47. I would have gotten a whooping when I was a child. Um, to, the moderate, to the moderator, to the moderator staff, to the president of the youth, um, greetings. I come, up, I come before you to um, give you the officers for the next 2023-24 uh, session. By the grace of God, we will have the president, Sister Davidson. Vice President, Sister Michelle Tuck. Secretary, Sister Shannon um, White, White. And Chaplain is Brother George Boyd. And in his, uh, uh, Reverend, is someone going to pray them in tonight? Is, is someone going to pray them in tonight? In his absence, I would ask that his mother stand in his place. Amen. Oh, excuse me. Can Michael please stand in his place in his absence? All right. All right. Okay. These are the officers that have been elected to serve in the coming year of the coming 104th session. And uh, are we ready to? All right, the names you have heard, and uh, we need someone to entertain a motion to uh, receive this, uh, the officers elect at this time. Second, it's been motion, motion by uh, moderator Glover and second by uh, Pastor Williams, Jimmy Williams. Then we do accept the, <coughs> the names of the nominees and uh, so we're ready for questions. All in favor, let it be uh, known by the use of sign of aye. Aye. Contrary? All right, it shall be done. These are the officers. We uh, will install you guys while you're here. We're going to uh, ask that we do it by prayer. All right, we're going to ask uh, first moderator. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen today ears have heard and what our hearts have felt. Father, we pray for these officers. Father, we're living in a time where commitment in our churches is fleeting. And help us, oh God, to work while it's day so that when they stand before you, you're the one that's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And that's what we are praying for tonight. So bless them individually. Bless them collectively. Guard their hearts and their minds. Touch them as well. Let them know that, God, it won't be easy, just like anything else in life. Church people will hurt you. 
but God is always by their side. So help them not to look at the little picture, but help them to see the big picture. And we thank you for these officers. Let them be a great example for these young people. And we thank you and cover them with your blood. And we bind every trick of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all the people said amen. God, some praise for these new officers elect. Amen. That's volunteered their services for the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. This time we're going to uh, bring a very fine young woman. Amen. To uh, come to us at this time. She has done an outstanding job as the president of the youth department. Amen. And uh, unfortunately, I believe this is her last year. But uh, God, is, God is able. Amen. I call her Tish because I've known her ever since she was a young girl. And she's grown into a fine Christian woman. Let's give our hand, Sister Letitia Davison. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to give honor to God who is indeed ahead of my life. I thank you all for coming out tonight to my moderator, Pastor Fishback, to uh, his staff, to um, the previous moderators that are here that I had the uh, privilege of serving underneath for the last 15 years. I've had a privilege of being underneath four moderators. Praise us to God. Um, Thank you to Pastor Valentine for opening his doors. And um, I just want to say thank you to all of you all who came out tonight to support these kids. Amen. Um, two weeks ago, we was unsure about the choir, to be honest. But there's a, always a ram in the bush. So um, I would like to first to thank Sister Vanita Bird. Within one week, <laughs> with God's help. We got our choir back. Um, before I get started, there is a presentation I want to do tonight. Um, there is a young gentleman who grew up in this district, but not only did he grow up in our district, but he has helped us the last, oh, we were trying to think, him, me and his mother, we don't even know how many years he's been playing the drums for the Union District. Amen. But he was really, really little when he started off, and now he's headed to college. So I'm going to ask moderator Fishback to come down with me as we present our token of love to KJ Hardesty, if you would come up, sir. <laughs> This here plaque states that it's presented to, is it come on? KJ Hardesty. <laughs> for years of faithful and dedicated service playing the drums for the Union District Association, you have always done an excellent job of using your God gift talent of playing the drums to glorify Him in an awesome and amazing way. We pray for you as you begin your next stage of life in attending college. And always know that we all love you and we appreciate you. May God bless you. Presented on this day, Wednesday, July the 19th, 2024. I promise I'm not going to be long at all. Uh, Keeping up with the youth is keeping up with the times. And one of the, uh, Pastor Ho touched a little bit the other night about social media. And 
if you have your phones, you can pull them out. Um, but we have a Union District Youth Facebook page. And we also have an Instagram page as well. So kids, if you ain't on there, go ahead, pull out your phones. This is um, the information for the Facebook page. And this is the information for the Instagram account. We got to get in tune with the kids. And the only way that we can get with them is to get on their level. So um, go follow us. We uh, got many plans for the next year. Um, as he stated, this is my last year. Um, but God has it all. And I have, I'm so grateful to have been able to be with these, with these kids for the last 15 years. It was nothing but God's grace. So um, be watching our, our page for the next uh, coming events. Um, but just quickly tonight, I want to talk to you on the subject, a delayed detox. Tonight, I stand here in front of you as your elected youth president. By the grace of God, he has allowed me to serve on this awesome group of youth in this great district now for almost 15 years. I've been blessed to serve under some wonderful leaders and four different moderators. I've been a part of the highs, and I've been a part of the lows. But our theme this week dwells on two main components. That's investment and future. But before we can move forward, we as a whole are long overdue for a very good cleanse, a delayed detox. Webster defines delay as a period of time by which something is late or postponed, and detox as a process or a period of time in which one abstains from or rids the body of toxic and unhealthy substances. In other words, we spend way too much time investing into things that's poison in our souls. And poison can be transmitted, and it can be spreaded if it goes too long being untreated. So when I look at the current situation of the world that we're living in, and I look at what our youth face daily, I realize that there's a need for a detox. We've got to go back to see where we lost our connection to those of the ages between 18 and 35 who aren't even attached to us anymore. We have to do a cleansing as a district and whole. It's time to flush out all the toxins that's delaying us to be able to connect to the youth that's sitting right here tonight in front of us. A toxin is a substance that's created by plants and animals that are poisonous, toxic to humans. There are four types of toxins, a fungal biox bioxin, a microbial, uh, bio, a plant or animal-based bio, biotoxin. But we as a whole group, we're fighting off some spiritual toxins. <laughs> and everyone knows exactly what I mean. Envy, jealousy, authority, the blame shame game, and our biggest one is hatred. But how do we expect the youth to be excited about church anymore when we've allowed all these toxins to consume our flesh and stump our spiritual growth? We need to rid our souls of all those things that's eating us from the inside out. Yes, we can grow bigger than any district lines that divides us from the next. We want to connect and bring our young adults back to the churches and provide a spiritual safe place for all of them. We have to rid ourselves of their envy, jealousy, and hatred towards our brothers and our sisters. We have to detox our souls from the corruption of the world of evil and holding on to titles instead of place of uh, service. We're long overdue. We can't keep carrying over these toxins and poison and expect a different outcome. There hasn't been one infected plant that survived. And if a load of bread is contaminated, what do we do? We throw it away. But we need to invest in these kids that are standing right here in front of us. We need to invest in the teens. We need to invest in our young adults. We need to invest in our own homes, our own churches, our own family. We need to invest in ourselves. We need to start with a daily regimen of prayer and reading the Bible. Go back to the basics. Together as one, we have to break that generational curse of poison so that the complete detox can be effective of our own. The future is bright because God is in control. If we can break history with our first black president and now our first black woman vice president, and if we can survive tornadoes, and if we can survive years of COVID, then we can eliminate 
if we can eliminate the barriers that once divided our races to where we can all sit together now, we can all eat together now, we can all worship together now, we can all pray together now, then we can come together and rid out all the toxins that Satan has placed in our youth today and love one another for the sake of our children. Then we can all step into the future that he has intended for us to have. Let's lift up the next generation instead of beating them down. Love, unity, and prayer is what they need to see from all of us. Amen. Hebrews 9.14 states, How much more then with the blood of Christ, who the internal spirit offered himself unblemished, key word was unblemished, to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Then Psalms 51, 7 and 10 states, Cleanse me so that I will be clean, and wash me so that I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me so that I can be a better leader, so that I can be a better daughter, mother, sister, and friend, so that I can walk into my tomorrow and lead these children to the future that only the Lord, that the only the Lord holds, so that I and so that us as a district, this department, can also walk into tomorrow's promise with love for one another and be the pillar in the background for our youth and young adults. It's time to de detox. It's delayed, but it's not denied. I thank you all for your support and your prayers. And let's just go do this thing, y'all. Yeah. They see enough toxins out there and everything else in, from the outside world. What do they see from us? Let's show them that we are here for them, standing together as one whole unit. So let's love, let love be the biggest investment to the future that you can give. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Davis. You've been a blessing to the district in a mighty way. <clears throat> Brothers, we've heard the address. I want to entertain a motion to receive the address as given, receive and adopt. Yes, sir. I move that we accept our president's address as given. All right. Second. It's been motion that we do accept and adopt the president uh, the address is given, motion by Pastor Duncan and second by Pastor Fort that we do that. Are we ready for question? Right. All those in favor, let it be known by you to sign a voting. Aye. Aye. Contrary, it is done. Thank you so much. Let's give another hand, Sister <laughs> Patricia Davidson. <laughs> and we have heard that she's accepted a, a position on the state level, so... We wish, uh, w is that right or am I wrong? Yes, Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you so much for all the work you've done here in this district. All right. Uh, briefly, we're going to uh, ask the finance committee to come at this time, and let's get our offering out of the way. The finance committee, amen, and to pave way for the, for the main course tonight. Amen. As these preachers come tonight to bless us with the word of God. All right. Okay, now you have those on both, silver tray on both tables, so both tables, but the silver tray, am I right? All right. Silver tray is for the speaker, the, the plain tray is for the works. Amen. We're going to ask that you obey the ushers at this time.
Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we call on your righteous name, Heavenly Father, and we cannot thank you enough for all your continual blessings. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that this offering may be used to glorify your name and Heavenly Father. And we be so careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Everyone that gave, even those that didn't have to give, we thank you. All right, we're going to have another selection from the MVP, the Melodious Voices of Praise. Let's give my a hand one more time.
Thank you, Lord. All right. Moving right along, we got some presentations we want to make at this time. We're going to ask the president of our Congress of Christian Education to come, none other than president, pastor, my friend, Tony Woodson. Give him a hand. Honey. I'm not Tony Woodson, but I play Tony Woodson on TV. <laughs> Just kid. Love you, brother. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Tim Stanley, and I'm the uh, second vice president of the Congress of Christian Education. And it was my distinct honor to be in charge of the LD Brit Scholarship this year. Amen. And uh, I am so excited to be able to present the L.D. Britt Scholarship this year. Amen? Amen? For those of you that don't know, uh, we were able to raise all the amounts for first, second, and third place by $250. First place this year is $1,250. Amen? <laughs> second place this year is $1,000. Amen. And third place this year is $750. Amen. And I want to say that I am indebted and we are grateful for all the churches that contributed this year. Amen. Because if it wasn't for the churches contributing, we wouldn't be able to raise that amount. Amen. So we thank you. And also, just real quick, want to thank the entire staff of the Congress of Christian Education. Amen. You don't mind if I take a minute and just read, do you? Uh, of course. Pastor Tony Woodson is president, amen. Uh, first vice president was Reverend John Lee from Mount Zion. Second vice president, myself. The president's secretary, Sister Jackie Snowden. The assistant secretary, Sister Alicia Ward. Our dean, who we'll be hearing from tonight, Pastor Courtney Warren, amen, from State Street Baptist Church. Uh, our assistant dean, Pastor Dante Paul. Right up here, getting ready to introduce Courtney. Uh, Institute Secretary, Sister Sharon Haney Cosby. Assistant Institute Secretary is vacant at this time. Treasurer, Reverend Colby Barnett. I don't know if he's here tonight, but I saw him last night. Uh, and the Financial Secretary, Sister Jackie Pillow. Amen. So thank you to all the staff that made this possible. And at this time, yes. And I would like to thank my wife. Thank you for that assist, brother. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. I'm going to be able to go home and eat tonight. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But my wife was my secretary, so I want to definitely show some appreciation and some love to her. Amen. <laughs> and uh, she played that role very well, I may add. Uh, so at this time, we are going to present, and I'm going to give you the plaques. He's got the checks. So, uh, of course, the uh, theme this year is giving glory to God by investing in our future. And our essay this year was a 500-word essay on the importance of investing in our future as it relates to the church investing in our youth. Amen? And I hate it that we had to pick winners from these essays because I read every essay and it was stellar. Every one of them were stellar. They were great. But we gave it to a committee and we charged them with picking first, second, and third place and they did it and we thanked them for it. So first, third place tonight, and this is your night, KJ, KJ Hardesty, come on up. Thank you. Thank you, 
Thank you, KJ. Amen. Second place tonight, Antone Young. And now the first place recipient, $1,250, y'all. Amen. Akeisha Hayes. Akeisha, Akeisha Hayes. Where you at, Akeisha? Come on. Amen. Amen. Let's give these three recipients another hand clap of appreciation. We are investing in our future. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to uh, our president, Tony Woodson, here, and he's going to tell us about another exciting chapter that we're getting ready to start. We're going to start it this year, but we're going to hand it out next year, and he's going to talk a little bit about it. Thank you. One of the things uh, that came through uh, Warren County was a tornado. And it changed lives everywhere. Yes. Just thinking about it, it just makes me quiver. Over two years ago, I remember that night like it was yesterday. It was the worstest sound. I've never been in a tornado before. And I really thought I was losing my life. But God spared my life. But some was unfortunate. Uh, their lives was not spared. And God is too perfect to make a mistake. Yes. And so it moved uh, my spirit, uh, that there was a family that was affected. And because of that, uh, we have started a scholarship uh, in the name of the family that was lost. But before I get to the scholarship, uh, I'm going to bring forth uh, Pastor Duncan and Sister Duncan. It was their family. It was their family. Uh, it, it's been hard for them, uh, but because of uh, the loss of some, and because God deals with sacrifice, many, many, many lives is going to be affected. Uh, they have started a foundation uh, in the name of the Brown family, and I'm going to allow them to speak on that foundation, and then I'm going to come back with the scholarship. To God be the glory. Amen. And to God we will uh, always give the praise. Amen. Uh, as Pastor Woodson uh, said, uh, 2021, uh, we went uh, to sleep that night uh, not knowing uh, that I spoke with my son that night. Uh, and he, is, uh, he was a uh, one that prided himself in preparation, uh, and so I, when I spoke with him, uh, he knew that the storm was coming, um, but uh, he didn't know what God had in store. Uh, he was preparing uh, his children, uh, my grandchildren, for the night, uh, and um, I'm, I know he did all that he could have done. Um, that morning, um, I received a phone call 
uh, from uh, my friend, uh, one of the officers of Macedonia, uh, Deacon Rodney Faulkner, uh, in tears. Uh, he said, Pastor, you need to get down here. Uh, your son's house is gone. Um, God put that in our lives for purpose. Uh, I believe that. He put it in our lives for purpose. Uh, and it is a forever thorn in our flesh. Um, so many said that uh, you'll heal. We won't. Uh, that night, uh, we were separated uh, from our son. Uh, we were separated from our daughter in love. Uh, then we were separated from our heartbeats. Uh, Naraya, uh, Nisa, uh, Nolan, and Niles. Uh, and um, Rachel, our daughter in love, her mother was in there as well. Uh, Nolan and Nisa sang uh, with you guys. Uh, they sang with you guys, and um, Brother Bryce and I will never, and I don't want to lose the vision that I can see Nolan grinning because he's going to sing with you, D.A. Um, the thorn is in our flesh, but we have discovered that his grace is sufficient. So long story short, uh, when after the tornado hit, after we uh, laid our loved ones to rest, the money started flowing in. I mean money. It's hard to imagine taking money that your grandkids uh, passed away and go buy a new car. It's hard to imagine doing that, preacher. So the Lord laid in our spirit um, that we would bless whoever we could bless. It started out uh, that we take trips uh, down to Bowling Green and just whoever we seen, we'd start passing out money. Uh, and then uh, my wife had the idea to load the van up uh, and go to Mayfield. Uh, and we started passing out money down there. And until you've lost on that level, you wouldn't understand the gratitude that those folk had just to get a gift card. Because they ain't got, they ain't have nothing else. House gone. Everything they know is gone. And so the money's kept coming in. So we went to the body at Macedonia, and we uh, funded or filtered the money through the church that now not only do we bless uh, people who have been affected by natural disasters, we bless anybody who's in need. Uh, the last... Uh, the last, the last count, I think it was over 20, no, no, the amount, the $20,000 uh, that had came in. Uh, and so we're asking, uh, if you hear of anything that we're doing on the behalf, it's called the Brown uh, Family Foundation that we bless people in need. We've, we've paid people's rent or the Lord has paid people's rent put food on the table, whatever it is uh, that we can do uh, through that foundation, we're going to do it. If you have Givelify, you can search out Macedonia Baptist Church, 290 Hill Street. You'll see a picture of a sophisticated guy sitting in front of the church. Uh, bow tie. You, if you want to donate to that foundation, uh, go down, scroll down to other uh, put in Brown Foundation and whatever the Lord lays on your heart uh, to do. Let me say this, and, and I'm going to be done. It took my wife, I asked you to pray for her. 
uh, because it took her a long time before she could even stand up like this. Uh, and so her and my son were together for eight years before we met, and it was just them two. And so a part of her heart has been ripped out, but she's a soldier for the Lord. Let's give her a hand. Amen. So enough time. I want to thank uh, Pastor Woodson uh, for the vision now that he has um, uh, brought forth, uh, not only to bless those who uh, don't have, but to bless these young people. Uh, and I want to say this, um, Nisa, excuse me, Naraya was the oldest. Nisa, uh, Nisa was y'all buddy. Yeah. Amen. Nolan, uh, just, he lit up the room. Uh, and Niles thought he was a pimp. Uh, <laughs> and Niles thought he was a pimp. But, but I want to say this. So what we do, Bryce, and now we want to we want to share twofold uh, uh, to people that we meet. We want to share two things. First, we want to share to the adults. I promise you, you don't have a day to waste being mad at nobody. If you don't believe it, you just keep living. And the Lord will bring things in your path that will cause you to love everybody. And to our young people, you don't have a day to waste apart from God. Because the hardest thing we have to deal with, and we don't mind sharing this with people, I don't know if my son was saved. See, that, that, that shut the room up, didn't it? So now I have to live with that, not knowing. So, Pastor Wilson, we thank you. Uh, we give God glory for you. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Amen. As they were saying, it, it affected, and the Lord put it in my spirit because we only lived a street and a half from that house. Uh, but the kids' names start with an N, and so we call this scholarship the N. Brown Scholarship. Now you're going to hear, you're going to be hearing a lot more about this scholarship. It's not for seniors going to college, but it's, we're going to award each age group of each child that was affected uh, to help them, the families, and everything like that. So we are going to get it to the churches, how you can give, how you can give to the foundation, how you can give to the scholarship, and just whatever God put in your spirit, amen, amen it will help out. Amen. God bless you. so much and uh, <clears throat> certainly I know uh, you know they're looking down on us right now I know God is he's an able God through it all and uh, everything we go through I believe is for a purpose just like you say amen moving on we have a uh, next lady that's coming to us is one whom we're all proud of to make another presentation. She is uh, one that we as a race can be proud of. And just as an outstanding person, uh, we're proud of her. Amen. She was one of, not one of, I think the first black graduate of Western Kentucky <laughs> University. <laughs> Come on, Sister Mundy, Sister Margaret Mundy. Let's give a hand if she comes.
All right, I'll start, I'll start over. <laughs> to Brother Fishback, our moderator, and to our presiding officer, to his staff, to our president, youth president, Sister Davidson, who's doing such a good job, and to um, all of our auxiliary heads, our ladies auxiliary, uh, and so forth. I want to say it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight, and I'm glad to be here. And before I go too far, I'm going to ask Brother Glover to make an explanation here, please. First, give an honor to God. Um, for those of you who know and may not know, uh, this scholarship is uh, in the memory of uh, the late uh, Agnes Mundy, who was... Uh, Sister Margaret Mundy's mother, who served as youth president for uh, 30 some odd years, and uh, and uh, Sister Margaret Mundy served along with her as the youth uh, director, and I was part of it, part of, and so many others. And so uh, this year, uh, just like previous years, uh, we have always. Uh, uh, selected individuals to receive the Agnes and Margaret Mundy scholarship. Uh, for this year, uh, because of n uh, numerous uh, uh, reasonings, uh, the monies didn't come through like we was hoping and intending and all. And so uh, the Lord laid it on uh, our hearts uh, to do something uh, that has never been done before and uh, so what we decided to do as a Union District Association, uh, we decided to donate uh, to the Agnes and Margaret Mundy Scholarship this year so that everyone who participated, who applied for the scholarship, every individual is going to receive a $500 scholarship tonight. <laughs> And we're doing this in the memory of her niece, Sister Jennifer Faulkner. As uh, briefly as we all know, uh, this has been an up and down year uh, for Sister Mundy. Uh, she had something uh, amazing and uh, definitely overdue honor uh, bestowed upon her earlier during this year. If you attend Western Kentucky University, the only building with the name of a black person is a dormitory in the name of Sister Margaret Mundy. Well overdue. And if you by chance happen to go down to the luxurious city of Auburn, Kentucky, Downtown, you will find a monument that has been erected in uh, Sister Margaret Mundy as well. Well, uh, while she was on cloud nine, uh, receiving all of those accolades and all, uh, unfortunately, tragedy hit her family uh, because her niece uh, unfortunately was in a terrible accident and she lost her life. And so these scholarships tonight are all in her memory. And, uh, and we're going to ask her husband to come up. Amen. Come on, Brother Rodney. I just want to lastly say uh, that if anyone knew Sister Jennifer, she was a walking angel. Uh, she was a sweet spirit woman. I, I was so thankful that I got to know uh, her and, and Brother Rodney in an organization that we were all once in. And, uh, and I got to share this. Please don't get mad at me, Mama. I, I got to share this. Uh, I called Sister Mundy. Uh, to make sure that she was going to be here tonight, like I always do. And soon she answered the phone. She said, Reverend Glover, I'm so glad to call. 
I got to tell you something. I said, yes, ma'am, what you got to tell me? I'm not going to be able to make it this year. I said, oh, I said, now, we, 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 we need for you to be there. I'm sorry, I just ain't going to be able to make it. And the reason why I can't make it is because, listen, Jenny took me everywhere. Yeah. Jenny's not here no more. I can't, I can't make it. I said, well, I said, Sister Money, you're going to have to make me let the cat out the bag. She said, what? I said, we was going to surprise you, but all the scholarships are going to be in memory of Sister Jennifer. Sister Money said, I'll be there, Rem Glover. <laughs> Enough said, amen. All right. Uh, thank you, Brother Glove. I'm going to have to hang him out to dry, you know. <laughs> because uh, he's right. Uh, he did call me. I had decided that I wasn't coming this year. We've been having storm after storm after storm. I do not like to drive at night on I-65 in a storm. Brother Williams knows that. <laughs> so... Um, I had made up in my mind I wasn't coming this year, and I've never missed in my life. So um, this, I was supposed to be at vacation Bible school. It was three nights, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I went to Tuesday, was going back Wednesday, but I got a call. And uh, I thought, well, I wonder who this could be. And it was Brother Glover back here. My, and uh, he said, he said, if what he said is true, and... Um, I thought, well, I just, I, I, he told me about Jen and what they were doing for her. I thought, I cannot let Jennifer down, although she's gone. I can't let her down because everywhere I went, Jennifer was there. Yeah. She went with me. Yeah. Uh, or if I needed to sh be shown the way where it was, like in Lovin's Chapel, they had been doing some road construction. I couldn't go the same way I'd been going. She said, oh, I was just over there last Sunday. You follow me. I, my brother was bad off sick in Louisville, and his daughter Monica called me on a Saturday night. I'd just been there that morning in Louisville, and um, she said, Dad is worse. He's, we think he's going to die. Well, I got ready to go, and before I could get out of the house, my phone was ringing again. This was 12 o'clock on Saturday night, and I thought, well, who on earth is calling me here before I can get out of the house? I just hung up the phone. I went back. Most of the time I go over to the car if I'm on the back porch, you know, headed to the car and just phone, you know, we just take care of stuff. But I went back and uh, it was Jen. And she said, hey, Murray, I heard about Uncle Jerry. And uh, you on your way up there? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, well, you're not going by yourself. And she pulled her car in the, on the carport after I pulled mine out and we went to Louisville. Because after that, I had to go all the year of 13 by myself, which was all right. But somebody like that, I just couldn't let them down. Amen. She'd been a good niece to me. And uh, I, I appreciate her so very, very much, as well as Rodney is here. Now, I want to say serving the Lord pays off. Yes. We don't have to wait till tomorrow or so forth. It pays off now. And I know that, and I'm definitely a firm believer in Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Yep. Plans to prosper you and not do you evil. Yes, but I'm sir. dwindling it down to. And I love that verse. I really do. Yes. I went, uh, my car was supposed to be, what it was, service uh, yesterday, on Tuesday, yesterday. And it was, it only has to be serviced one time a year. And, um, uh, at the pump, I thought I, I, well, I decided I'd get my gas before I went to the station, to the garage, for him to take out the oil and everything. And uh, when I pulled up, there was a, a farm truck that pulled around on the other side at the BP in Russellville. And uh, a red-haired, freckle-faced young man got out, and he said, Miss Monday. I said, yes. I was trying to put my card in. He said, wait just a moment. He said, uh, let me uh, see your card here. I said, oh, it's my bank card. It's got, it, it fits. I've done it before here. He said, well, let me just try this one. And he did. He put his in and everything. And I said, well, now, Tim, uh, I mean, Chris, uh, you can take it out now. I can put mine in now. It's all right. <laughs> it's going to work and everything. He said, no, let this one work. He went on and filled up my card. Amen. Amen. And he, I thought, well, God is still in the blessing business here. I tell you <laughs> 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 And he went on to tell me the things that he appreciated. He was one of my former students. And he went on to tell me the things that he appreciated and everything. 
And I thought, well, my goodness, you know, <laughs> this is quite a gift. Amen. So I was grateful for that. And it's just things like that that you appreciate. I mean, I want to say to these young people tonight, young people, I'm trusting the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Yes. Lean not to your own understanding. Yes. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, yes. and he will direct your path. Yes. I know he will. And uh, I enjoy the youth film this night, the singing. You did a good job. This is a young generation, and they're going to do it their way. Amen. When I directed the youth choir, we did it our way. That's right. That's right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, to the business at hand, I am now going to present, begin presenting these awards, and the, I'm going to present the first one to Natavia Gonzalez. I hope I said that correctly. Amen. Did I, did I mess up your name? Uh, Natavia. Natavia. All right. This is what it's going to read. All of them is going to read the same, everybody. Union District Association Women's Theater and Youth Department, Agnes and Margaret Mundy Scholarship, presented to Natavia Gonzalez in recognition of receiving the Agnes and Margaret Mundy Scholarship in love and memory of Sister Jennifer Faulkner. Presented on this day of July 19, 2023, by Mar Sister Margaret Mundy. Women's Auxiliary President, Sister L. Michelle Harris. Youth President, Sister Letitia Davis. Moderator, Pastor Lee Fishbaugh. Yeah. Have a good year. Acacia Hayes. Mr. Hayes, I want to say to you, I know your dad very well. Granddaddy. Granddaddy. Work, we worked together here in the youth department under Brother Madre Taylor, and we were working in the music department. It gives me a pleasure, great pleasure, to present you this. Amen. Sister Keria Coleman. recognition of her receiving this Murray Monday scholarship, Agnes Monday, in love and memory of Sister Jennifer Faulkner from the Union District Association. Omar Glover, Brother Omar Glover. <laughs> this is the grandson of Brother Tim, a Brother Tim Glover here. I can't believe this. I present this to you, Brother Glover. Brother Kajuan, Kajuan, Kajuan Hardesty. Did I mess you up? KJ. I want to say that you are from Adara, but are you? Okay, all right. I would like to present you this scholarship in the memory of Agnes Margaret Mundy and Sister Jennifer Faulkner. Thank you, thank you. I want to say many thanks and be blessed, Union District, for what you have done for us tonight. Amen. We appreciate this so very much, and the hard work of Brother Glove as well. I appreciate it very much. And before I take my seat, I'm going to ask Jennifer's family, that are here, rest of her family, to stand that you may know see them.
Thank you. Some through the fire, some through the flood, some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just before we uh, introduce the speaker, can I get all the recipients of the scholarships tonight uh, so that we can get a photo opportunity of all the recipients of the, of the scholarship because that is something uh, to give God praise for and something to acknowledge uh, the youth on tonight because they put in a lot of work and a lot of effort um, for the scholarships to receive it. So if we could ask all the youth to come down uh, that has received the scholarships tonight before we can get a photo opportunity before I introduce the speaker. I've been given the great pleasure to introduce the speaker uh, of the hour, and it is quite hilarious to me um, of the time that a year makes. Um, because a year ago, I had no idea who this man was, and I would like to be able to be like Peter and be like, I don't know the man, um, uh, but I would be lying. And so uh, being able to serve uh, under Pastor Warren as dean uh, has given me the privilege to get to know him uh, not just professionally, but also know him personally. Uh, I can say a few things about him. Courtney, I'm not going to tell it all because we'll be in trouble if I tell it all. Uh, I, I, can tell you, I can tell you this, uh, that he loves his cigars. Uh, I can tell you that he is a frat man. Uh, I can tell you uh, that he is a working man, that he is uh, excelling in his professional career. Um, but those things are not important. Uh, but what is important is that he is the learner of God's word. Uh, what is important is uh, that he is a husband and a father, um, but also that he is a man of integrity. So I introduce the some, present the others, the pastor, Pastor Dr. Courtney Warren.
you've been there for me even when i wasn't right you came into my life now i'm walking in the light you came into my heart you gave me a new start that's why i praise your name lord you have been so good Thank you for being so good to me. It's not my intention to hold you long on this Wednesday night with protocol already being established. I greet each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. Yes, Thank you, Pastor Paul, for that wonderful introduction. And you are right that the difference that a year can make. <laughs> Amen. And I would be remiss if I recognize my church that God has assigned me to in this season. Yes, and that is none other than State Street. Baptist Church. If you have your Bibles with you on tonight, whether the hard copy or the electronic version, and if you have neither one, then it should be on the screen in front of you. Meet me at the book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. I want to lift up in your hearing verses 7 through 14. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, getting at verse number 7. And when you have it, please say amen. If you're physically able to stand, then I ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse number seven, and it reads, But when Sembalit, Tobiah, the Arab, uh -huh. the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod yes. heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had uh -huh. gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, Amen. they were very angry. Yes, sir. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem 
and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Uh Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. And there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemies said, before they know it or see us, We will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to their work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some people, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places posted them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Before you take your seat, I want to give you this evening's sermon title. Failure Uh is not an option. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Failure is not an option. Let us pray. Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. Lord, speak, for your people are listening. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Whenever the Lord calls a person to serve him, Opposition usually follows. Sometimes it comes in a subtle manner. And at other times it comes through strong, open resistance. Unbelievers and believers can be the source of such problems. And people never know in advance how, when, or from where opposition to the Lord's work will appear. Let me give you the background so you understand today's breakdown. Because while serving in Persia, Nehemiah receives word that the city of Jerusalem was in a desperate situation. And because he was a man of prayer, Nehemiah went before the Lord with this disheartening news. He he, he realized during the time spent on his knees that God had chosen him to return to Jerusalem, encourage the remnant, rebuild the walls to the city, and remove their disgrace. Oh, I need to stop parenthetically right there this evening because of the fact that before he made any move, before he went to King Artaxerxes, the first thing he did was fall on his knees and had a conversation with God. But no sooner had word of Nehemiah's mission spread than the first indication of trouble came. As soon as the enemy found out that we are bringing God glory, 
By investing in our future, opposition came about. The, the, the Bible says, let me walk you through the text this evening. The, the, the Bible says that Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, when they heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there had come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. See, people would rather pray on you than pray for you. See, see, they are okay as long as the ministry is doing minimum work. They, they meet on Sundays two hours and go home. But as soon as the church starts, as soon as the district starts to bring God some glory by investing in the future, they become upset. Ooh, yeah. this, this morning. They, the, the, the Bible says they are grieved because they didn't think of it. They're, they're grieved because it wasn't their plan. They're, they're grieved because it wasn't their idea. They're grieved because they can no longer hurt the remedy. They're grieved because they don't want to see the district move. They're grieved. They're upset because of what's going on. And I stopped by to let you know that whenever, whenever you're doing the work of the Lord, there's going to be some people who are grieved. Yes, because first they opposed Nehemiah and his workmen through ridicule. Uh-huh. Nehemiah's response to the taunts of Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem was that the matter was in the Lord's hands. Yeah. When, when, when they came against Nehemiah, and his workers, they started to ridicule what Nehemiah was doing. They started to ridicule the district. They started to ridicule the Congress of Christian Education. They started to ridicule the women's ministry. They started to ridicule the brotherhood. They started to ridicule every auxiliary that existed in the Union District. And Nehemiah said it like this, it's in the Lord's hands. And I believe that there's somebody here that remember that song that says, I put it all in his hands. Yeah. This yeah. and that. Yeah. I put it all yeah. in his yeah. hands. Yeah. And the Bible, the Bible says they will go on building the wall uh-huh. as commissioned by the Lord. And that no one will stop them from their God-given task. Yeah. Nehemiah's God-given responsibility could not be deterred by the ridicule of the crowd. But after they grieved, they opposed Nehemiah with mockery. Chapter 4 relates that the construction of the city walls were well underway. And the gates were also being repaired. And when Sambalat learned that the work was continuing, he moves from being grieved to being angry. He could not allow the project to go on. Seeking to bring the rebuilding to a halt, he resorted to mockery. He said to his brethren in the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heat and the rubbish so they are burned? And the fact of the matter that we need to understand that when you are investing in something, then you must understand that the work must go on. Regardless of the ridicule, regardless of the mockery, regardless of the anger, that the work must go. There is no place to slow down or quit. But in light of this context, 
in light of what's going on, yeah. although Nehemiah said it's in God's hands, yeah. the opposition remained. Yeah. And as long as we live upon this earth, with a desire and a commitment to serve God, yes, we will face adversity. Yes, oh, I need somebody missed that this evening. Yes, Regardless of what you do, yes, as long as you're following the blueprint that God has set forth, there will be opposition. Come here, let me give you a sad order of scripture this morning because Jesus says it like this. They hate you because of me. You're going to have some opposition. You're going to have some naysayers. But I need for you to be of good. Oh, we got some Bible readers in here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Needs you to be of good cheer. So don't worry. Just worship. No, 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 no matter what they say, don't worry, just worship. They say, they, they say, Pastor Paul, if you say things three times, then people will get it. So let me try just one more time. Let me talk to this. Don't worry, just worship. Yeah, Nehemiah and the others were opposed, but God had kept them. They were still there laboring on this wall. Storms will come, but they will not last forever. We leave it to my first point this, this, this evening is that we must analyze within this text the dissension of the enemy. The dissension of the enemy. The enemy, they were constantly watching the progress of the workers. But when they noticed that the walls were made up, they became increasingly alarmed. They got a little worried. Uh, because, see, this world doesn't mind us being busy in our work. As long as we're not making any real progress. <laughs> See, when, when, when you begin to accomplish something of value for the Lord, they will show up in opposition. They don't mind if you're just meeting on Sunday mornings and 6.30 on when They don't mind that. But when you go out in the community and you start treating people the way Jesus treated people, when you start loving people the way Jesus loved people, when you start, he said, you're going to always have the poor among you. And when you recognize that and you start working on those individuals, you must realize that's when the opposition will come. Because the text says, at this point, the enemy becomes wroth. That's that, that's that King James version. They, they become wroth. They become angry. They become mad. This has the idea of being exceedingly hot or furious, to be consumed with anger. And it appears that Symbolic and all the others had begun to panic a bit over all that had been accomplished, and they were furious. Don't expect this world to be happy about our progress. In fact, we ought to expect them to be genuinely angry with us. See, the, the, the enemy is never happy when the church prevails. The, the enemy had a common goal. And that was to defeat the Jews as they labored on the wall. And they were united in their cause and came together in opposition. Some people will not like you because they see the accomplishments you are making. They see your wall progressing and they stand to lose position or power or prestige over you. Some people will criticize and oppose a project because of envy. They will simply be 
jealous of someone else's success. They may have had very little in common when it comes to their personal agendas. But rest assured that they will come together in opposition against the church. So we, we, we had met Symbolic, Tobiah, and Geshem. But here we find that now many others had joined them. Some of their people and even the Ashadites. And some people don't have anything in common except you. We, we invested in our youth and that's the only thing. They, they don't even like each other, but they'll get together to go against you. They'll call each other. They'll text each other. They don't even have each other's numbers saved in their phone, but they'll find a way to talk to somebody just to come against you. Because, see, unity is the drive of the Savior, the delights of the saints, and the dread of Satan. See, see, Satan delights in dividing the church. <laughs> and there will always be a Symbolic and a Tobiah yeah. around somewhere. Yes, sir. Th th there will always be a Symbolic and a... All, sometimes the Symbolic is sitting on the pew with you on Sunday morning. They ain't always outside the church doors. It's those that done came down and they done said, I profess a hope in Christ and I believe in Jesus Christ. And as soon as they go back to their seat, they're starting to raise some mess and raise some hell. They raise hell inside the church. They raise hell outside the church. They raise hell on the district level. They raise hell on the state level. No matter where you go, they're raising hell. You're going to always deal with a symbolic they're everywhere don't get it twisted they everywhere they, they everywhere inflexible inflexible people resist change to their walls their plans their colors their agendas, and they fail to realize that God might be the one bringing the needed change that they need to make. As you can always tell them like this, we, 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 we always did it this way. They don't embrace change at all. Because it's not their perspective. It's not their viewpoint. It wasn't their plan. And they, instead of learning how to talk about it, they mark you as an enemy and they come out to get you. And there's a, there's a sad indictment against the church. The church is so splintered that we can't mount a united effort against the opposition. We are too focused on demanding that others do everything just as we do if we are to work with them in any fashion. If you don't recognize my title, my position, my status, you, you don't recognize how many years I've been doing this. Then I can't work with you. Because if I don't have a name badge on, then that means I'm nobody. And I can't go around here feeling like I'm a nobody. So you're going to respect me because when I put this badge on, that at the end of the day, all of us are servants. And what you want to hear it's the words from the Lord that says, well done. My, he ain't going to call you bishop. 
He ain't going to call your pastor. He ain't going to call your reverend. He ain't going to call your secretary. He ain't going to call your deacon. He's going to say, servant. Second, third, fourth, fifth, at the end of the day, you are a servant. And it comes a time where we must lay aside petty differences for the good of the church, for the good of the district, for the good of the state. Lay that aside. I like, I like what Nehemiah said. When, when, when Nehemiah is faced with that opposition, when he hears what's being said, when, when, when he hears what's going on, when they're sending him messages to come down off the wall, I, I, I like what Nehemiah said in that verse number nine, he, he says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because, come, come, come here, come here, please. He, he says that we prayed and we took up arms. See, see, we, we got too many passive individuals out here. That all they want to do is just pray and pray and pray and pray. But it is nothing wrong with praying and taking up arms. I, be, Lord, I forgot. I, I'm not at State Street. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm not at State Street. I'm about to go there. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, prayer is good, but there comes some work involved as well that you got to start getting your hands dirty sometimes. I ain't telling you just to disrespect and cuss no one out, but sometimes you got to let them know that I... Let me stop. Things may have looked desperate, but Nehemiah and the others had a weapon that the enemy had not counted on. And that was the power of prayer. Yeah. Nehemiah noticed the renewed attack. He sees them coming again, coming again, coming in. And he admit, didn't I tell y'all in my introduction when I led into this that before he make any move, any action, he always prays about it first. He has a conversation with God first. And even in this instance right there, he didn't change no plan. He didn't change. He went to the Lord and talked to God. And we need to be reminded of the power of prayer. Because prayer is the call to an interactive relationship with Jesus. In prayer, we present ourselves, our needs, ceaselessly before the Lord. Though our prayers do not change God's mind, he ordains prayer as a means to accomplish his will. Sometimes we spend so much time praying to God to change others when we should be praying to God to change us. We spend way too much time with our little sticky notes and talk, uh, uh, help this person and help that person and stop. We like sending God on field trips. Go on that side of town. Stop by that house. Uh, go by that. Stop sending God on field trips and get your feet to working and go out there yourself. Ask God to change me and stop always asking him to change somebody else. Yeah. 
But not only do we see the dissension of the enemy, if you're not careful, doubt will set in. Doubt will, the, the, the doubt of Judah, it, it goes from the enemy to now Judah themselves are doubting. And, and Judah says it, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decay. And there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Here they are working, and at the lunch break, they say, we can't do this. What have you been doing previously? You've been building the wall. You've been reestablishing the gates. And now all of a sudden, because you're now listening to the enemy, you're now doubting what you can do. We see their weakness, their weariness, and their withdrawals. Judah, one of the most prominent and influential tribes amongst the people, declared that there was no strength to continue. They, they saw it as a hopeless cause. They simply felt as if there wasn't good enough, there wasn't enough strength to continue. And they were ready to throw in the towel. And give up. Uh, wanted to abandon their effort altogether. Judah viewed the task as one that was impossible to accomplish. There was just too much rubbish and refuge in the way. It seemed as if there was no way they would ever be able to rebuild the walls and secure their city. There are those within the church today who are weary in the work. There are those that's in the district that's weary of the work. They have surveyed the task at hand and they see it as being, they're holding on to stuff five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 is something that was done to their mama. Their auntie, ain't nobody even mess with you, but you're holding on and you're carrying that same spirit into this generation. And as soon as you hear the president say we're investing in our future, oh, no, that ain't going to work. We, we tried that already. I ain't giving no, I ain't come to none of the institute meetings. I ain't come to no March drive. I ain't come to no annual session. I ain't doing any of that. I ain't giving none of my money because they don't use the money. We just awarded some students some money to go to school, and you're sitting up there, and you're talking about we ain't doing the right thing with it. We ain't got enough money. If we ain't got enough money, then maybe you need to give more. <laughs> they have grown weary from their past labor and simply cannot find the strength to continue. And this is exactly how the adversary, how the enemy, wants us to feel. He wants us to see our labor as a hopeless cause. He wants us to see a task that is impossible to fulfill. He wants us to lack faith that God is still able to move mountains. We are not laboring in our own abilities. The task is too great for us to perform in ourselves. But it is too worthy to abandon. We must find the strength we need to press on in this fight. And that strength is only found in the Lord. The strength of God is made perfect in our shortcomings. At the point that when we are frail, 
in ourselves. We have strength in the grace of Jesus. When we feel that we are powerless in ourselves, we are able to go to Christ and receive strength from him. For when I'm weak, he is strong. God said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. If y'all don't know me, y'all know what I I grew up in an old school black Baptist church. St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church, 2412 Osage Street, Nashville, Tennessee, in the heart of North Nashville, Tennessee, where the pastor none other than that of the Reverend W.B. Armstrong. And every now and then, the choir will get happy. That, y'all, y'all remember we used to number the choir, the, the number two choir. <laughs> the ones that take forever to march in. The, 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 you be waiting forever. Those, those long hot robes on and they, they marching from the back all the way to the choir stand. Do, do, do anybody know what I'm talking about right there? <laughs> and every now and then that sister Deborah Armstrong would grab that mic and she had a song that she would sing and she says when everything else fails I can go to the rock when troubles are all around me I can go to the rock because God promised that he would keep me if I abide in his holy word no matter what the problem Is there anybody here that know that they can go to the rock no matter the, your way maker, your strong tower, your heart fixer, no matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. The enemy put fear within their hearts. They feared their attack and the battle they might face. The Jews began to believe the words of Sambalat and Tobiah. They began to doubt their ability as well as God's power and his ability. They were ready to abandon the work and desert Jerusalem. And many are no longer attending church or serving the Lord because they viewed their labor as impossible. They were weak and weary and chose not to fight another battle. They felt that there was nothing left to stand for. And church, that is exactly what the enemy wants us to believe. He wants to place fear and doubt within our hearts. But we cannot abandon the work or flee the fights. There is too much at stake. That failure is not an option. About time for me to take my seat. It's time for in the heat of the night. I got to see what foolishness Chief Gillespie is up to this afternoon. But not only do we see the dissension of the enemy and the doubt of Judah, But one thing we can count on is the determination of Nehemiah. Because Nehemiah says that he put some watchmen. He knew the importance of watching for the enemy. He knew the people needed to be warned in advance of an attack. He strategically set watchmen prepared for battle. And although the wall to sound the alarm and defend the city, 
the enemy is seeking an avenue to defeat us and gain entrance amongst us. Yeah. And we must have some watchmen on the wall yeah. who are prepared to sound the alarm yeah. and stand firm in the defense. Yeah. Uh, but then Nehemiah addresses the people. He tells them that be not afraid. Yeah. Things may have looked bad on the surface. Yeah. And it may have seemed as if all hope was gone. Yeah. But God was still in control. Yeah. And there was nothing to fear as long as God is in control. Yeah. I'm reminded of a Bible verse. Yeah. The 8th chapter of Romans. Yeah. Huh, beginning at verse number 31. Huh, yeah. That says that what shall we then say? Huh? Yeah. To all of these things, huh? that if God be for us, huh? who can be against us? Huh? I think I'll run that by you just one more time. That if God uh, be for us, huh? who can be against us? Huh? There was too much at stake to lose this battle. Huh? And we must understand that failure is not an option. Huh? Their families and their future uh, yeah. depended upon their success. Uh, yeah. This was not just about their feelings or priorities. Uh, yeah. The future of the nation uh, rested upon them. Yeah. I'm reminded of a story of a runner at a track meet. Yeah. He took off with everyone with the starting pistol. Yeah. And as he got around close to the finish line, his legs gave out on him. And then all of the training staff uh, came over and tended to his needs. Uh, they bandaged him up. Uh, they told him that he needed to retire. Uh, they told him uh, his running days are over. Uh, you started the race, uh, but you won't finish the race. Uh, and just out of nowhere, uh, somebody came by out the stands, uh, put their arms around him, uh, and lifted him up. Uh, and they both hobbled uh, all the way. Uh, they limped uh, across the finish line uh, and nobody know who uh, that man was uh, but soon the announcer uh, started to speak into the microphone uh, and the announcer said uh, that that man uh, who helped him up uh, was his daddy uh, and I believe uh, there's somebody in here right now uh, that has started a race uh, but cannot finish uh, but we have a daddy uh, that will come out the stands uh, and help us uh, when we are uh, in times of need uh, is there anybody here uh, that's going to depend upon uh, their daddy uh, to help them uh, across the finish line. Uh, you know him, don't you? Uh, because Genesis says uh, he's the creator and promise redeemer. Uh, yeah. Exodus says uh, he's the Passover lamb. Uh, yeah. Leviticus calls him uh, yeah. the high priest. Uh, yeah. Numbers called him uh, the water in the desert. Uh, yeah. First Samuel calls him uh, all in one. Uh, he's a prophet and a king. Uh, yeah. Second Kings called him uh, the powerful prophet. Uh, Y'all know him, don't you? Uh, Job calls him uh, the mediator uh, between God and man. Uh, Proverbs called him uh, our wisdom. Uh, Ecclesiastics called him uh, our meaning of life. Uh, Y'all know him, don't you? Uh, Mark calls him uh, our suffering servant. Uh, Luke calls him uh, our great physician. Uh, and one Friday on a hill called Calvary uh, they hung him high. Uh, they stretched him wide uh, and he died. Uh, didn't he die? Uh, he died uh, until the sun refused to shine. He died uh, until the moon dripped in blood. Uh, he died uh, 
until the grave gave up their dead. He died until the centurion said, surely, 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 this must be the son of God. They tell me they took him off that old rugged cross, put him in Joseph's brand new tomb where he stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday. But early that Sunday morning, he got up, he got up, he got up, he got up, he got up with all power. But all power in his hands and that same power that got him out the grave is that same power that resides within us. So when we get tired, when we look at the work and we think we can't go on, remember we got some power. We got some strength. Uh, we can make it. Uh, we can make it. Uh, we can do it. Uh, if we just get together. I know the work is hard. And there's plenty of work for everyone to do. We just don't have enough workers. Jesus says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers, the laborers are few. Instead of you trying to get somebody else's position, won't you just get in a vacant position and do some work? There's more than enough work to be done. We all have a part to play in investing in our future. And when you invest for the right reason, in the financial world, we call it an ROI. That's a return on investment. The return on the investment is so much that we, we, we can't even imagine what it would be. But we got to get to work, y'all. We got to invest in our future. One day we're not gonna be here. We gotta have something to pass on to somebody else. Won't you help them now? Instead of talking about them, talk with them. Talk to them. Stop shaming them. Stop guilt tripping them. Let them know that you love them and so does Jesus. Invest in them. It's not always about money, but it's time, talent, and treasure. Union District, we've been commissioned to rebuild the walls. Won't you help Nehemiah rebuild the walls? May God bless you. Say amen. 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 Failure is not an option. Amen. Don't you know that the word can't is not in God's vocabulary? Yes, it's not there. But the word does tell us that he's able to do all things. Yes. And without him, we can't do anything. But all things are possible with God. We extend an invitation to maybe someone here tonight after listening to this message. You may have a notion to do a little better, rededicate your life to the Lord. If you hadn't accepted him, tonight's a good night. Amen. To make a change in your life. Let us stand. There's no like the lonely Jesus singing on oh, oh, no, no, well, no one can heal all of our souls.
Give him some praise tonight. Let's give him some praise. good and you know God is good amen all right so they want to give give God a hand for the word tonight amen, amen. through Pastor Warren thank God for the message and the messenger amen Program calls for announcements. Any announcements tonight, brothers? Full we'll appear to anyone? For the president? All right. We want to notice uh, all of our pastors tonight that's visiting. Pastor uh, Jordan, A.K. Jordan from Hopewell Baptist in Glasgow. Glad to see him and all of our ministering brethren tonight. Let's give these. Give these young people a hand. And, uh, ready. And all the scholarship recipients, amen. Certainly we're proud of them. On tomorrow at 3 o'clock, we'll be back. The ushers will be in charge of the program. Reverend Ronnie Williams, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church, will be the preacher on tomorrow afternoon. So... We invite all to come, amen, and share with us on tomorrow afternoon. And uh, certainly we thank uh, President Davison and the youth department for a very fine program tonight. Uh, thank uh, Sister Monday for being with us tonight. She honored us. Again. Thank you so much. Amen. All right, we're going to this time bring Pastor Warren back for the Let the church say amen. amen. Church say amen again. Amen. One quick announcement is that the Institute workshop for the month of July will be virtual. Uh, each respective church in the Union District should be receiving correspondence uh, within the next couple of days uh, explaining uh, where to go, it'll be on YouTube and the Christian of Congress Education Facebook page. Amen. So we have a great lineup for you. We got some uh, nice classes coming up for you, a nice lecture, and uh, Pastor J.K. Jordan of the Hopewell will be our sermon, our speaker for this service. Amen. 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 Well, I'm about to get out of here because I'm going to be late with in the heat of the night, so Get you guys out of here right now. There's no other uh, remarks. Let us all stand. Amen. Amen. 
let us pray. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we bless your holy name, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord, for the opposition in this world. Because without the opposition, we wouldn't learn to trust you as we do. But one thing we're reminded of in your word, Lord, that you said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you, Lord, will lift up a standard and provide us a way of escape, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for that right now. Thank you for the Union District, Lord, and the churches that make it up and the individuals within every church, Lord. And as we leave this place, but never from your face and shall never depart from your grace, Lord, we ask that you put a hedge of protection around each and every one that's leaving us up and down the roads, the highways and the byways, Lord. We love you and we praise you. Now, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, making you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working him that is well pleasing in his sight, God will be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the church all together say, Amen. Amen.